one of my all-time favorite preschool process art activities. And you could use a shoe box, you could use a shallow box, um, rubber maids if you want to let a couple students on each end to roll these marbles back and forth, um, cereal boxes. These trays came from a hospital, I believe, and they throw them away. So I've got a couple parents who know that I love junk and will gladly take it. I would come around, dot some paint on their paper, and this is tempera paint. It does come out of your clothes, easy to wash up. And I tend to stick to a color scheme. I wouldn't put um, red and green and orange because once the kids roll, 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 it'll end up with yuck brown, um, trust me. So we always talk about colors, warm colors versus cool colors. All the kids know, if you bring up the movie Frozen, they know when I say what colors are in Frozen, and they say purple and blue, and they understand that those are cold or cool colors. So the kids basically roll, and it's great for motor skills because I always tell them, try and move your tray or your box so that your marbles roll through the globs of paint. Inevitably, you will find a marble on the floor that gets away. The more you roll these, the more intriguing they become. They are gorgeous. Uh, the kids love doing this. It is, they will roll paper after paper after paper after paper. You could use these papers for a collage to tear up later on and glue down, which they absolutely love to do as well, um, or just display them. Uh, of course, having the art teacher background, I always bring in the artist Jackson Pollock, who um, you may know of, who threw paint um, on a canvas. And the kids think that's great. Um, even though we're not throwing paint, their work ends up looking just like good old Jackson Pollock. This is a, a no-brainer. You can't mess it up. Easy to clean up. Um, one helpful hint, and I'll probably say this over and over, before you start, write their name on the back because all these projects um, are going to be pretty messy um, towards the end. And that's just a helpful hint. Um, another project that I love is, is basic printmaking or stamping. And recently I did um, a class with three-year-olds and this was created using a good old toilet paper or paper towel tube, some bubble wrap and a rubber band. And they, stamped and stamped and stamped their little hearts out. Um, I would go around, put some paint on a piece of scrap paper. The reason why I like to use a little bit of scrap paper is when they start to um, dip their printing utensil in here, they're generally not gonna go over the paper and start spreading it on the desk. If I were to give them their paint on a large paper plate, they're going to take that paint and it's going to go all over the plate and not on the actual um, artwork. Take this. I'm sorry. Um, you can refill this, give it to another student, trade out a color, and let them go for it. Uh, so we had green, yellow, pink, and orange all going at the same time. And the kids thought it was great because they can see these colors that are mixing and they're just, they're just going for it. They're having a great time. And I would frame that and hang it in my house. The other thing that we incorporated um, that same day, we had potato mashers. And these were a hoot 
because the kids thought they looked like waffles. And the comments that I got, oh, this looks like my mom's waffle. This I would put probably on a plate because they're gonna have to roll it around. It's nice and painted and they press it. And it makes the coolest marks on their paper. Any of these projects could be um, built on each other. You could go back with this after it dries or while it's wet and go back and put, let them stamp on it. Gives it a whole different effect and they will love it. Oops. Another fun idea that can be utilized with cardboard or um, old playing cards, which we always seem to lose half the deck when I take them to the art room. Um, this is a scrape painting. And while I'm losing my train of thought here, this is a messy mat. And these are super. I'll put them down under the kids. And it's to basically just contain the mess. Newspaper is fine, um, but a messy mat is fun because at the end of the year or at the end of the, their little season of life, we'll cut this up and make stuff out of it as well. So messy, messy, messy. Oh, that's a lot of paint. So with a card or a scrape paint, this could be done with um, old gift cards. Um, I've been known to cut the top or the lid of a, um, like a Rubbermaid container that I don't have the bottom to anymore to make scrapers as well. But you can wash them. These, throw them away when you're finished. But literally, you scrape. And the colors mix. And the kids are pretty much amazed. And there's no right or wrong. You could go back in. Add a dash more, get a whole other scraper, and just move that paint around and let, let them let it glide on their paper. If you have a lot of paint on this, um, because I'm a fan of painted paper so they can rip it and tear it, um, I'd take it and I'd lay another piece of paper on top and let them massage, massage, massage the back and pull it off and you've got um, a print of your painted paper. Uh, let's see. Foil. Painting on foil is different than paper. Um, just because of the surface, it is nice and um, slick. And it allows the kiddos to really feel the movement of their brush or, in my case, um, a Q-tip. And just making lines and squiggles and moving that paint around. I would more than likely tell them that the Q-tip is a car and they are on a windy, windy road and they are moving and grooving all over the place. And you'll hear them making the car noises, but they've, you know, they've got it. You could take this, because I love making prints, and have the kiddos lay another piece of paper down. Give it a massage. They love to give it a back rub. And pull it off. And now we've got a, another totally different work of art from when they started. Love it. Sorry about the dogs. Um, another thing that you can do with the foil, and I will plan that my, put that in my lesson later. Um, painting with worms. They love this, painting with worms. Um, good old yarn. I'm sure every preschool teacher has yarn and clothespins. Personally, I love the old school wooden clothespins. There's nothing like them. And using 
something different other than a paintbrush to paint with is uh, very fascinating to them. And I would have a larger little bowl right here to kind of get my worm nice and saturated. And they drag and they drop and they drag. And they're making these lines. And they're just kind of splatting. Um, this looks messy, but it's not because the, um, the yarn gets so saturated with the paint that you really don't have to worry about it flying across the room. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> and then let them stick another color in. Ice trays are great for paint. Um, more so for older kids. I do have some ice trays that have lids that are great. But there you go. Let them do a string painting. And it's there's no there's no right or wrong and they just they love it this is another jackson pollock tie in here we did a painting not a painting um a little process art with legos or these are like those bigger duplo blocks and you can tell they've been printed <laughs> before and what we did fold this right over as I squirted out paint on a small piece of paper and they rubbed it around in here. Like I said, if they've got a big area that their paint is um, on, that paint is going to be wasted pretty much on this area. So I tend to keep it small. They learn. And we printed just these circles and these crazy patterns. And they loved it. They thought it was great. You could go back. Everything that I use is, uh, is more or less junk that I can't let go of. But they're learning shapes. You're reiterating your circles, your shapes, your, uh, here we go, we got sponges that are in the shape of a circle or a big dot, round shape. Um, I bet a lot of teachers have sponge brushes. And if the kid decides to take it and go through it like this and, and paint it, that's great. They're experimenting. Um, they're, they're doing their thing. Uh, let's see here. Another fabulous tool, and we probably have them in our closets full of our craft supplies, is, um, a good old fork. And with a fork, you'll use the back of it. You can have them dip in and rub and drag and see what they get. They're going to come up with a story that th these are claws of a bear. I've had more children talk to me about their artwork when it does not have to be something. Um, when we were doing this crazy um they had cars and they were driving the cars through their artwork and a little one told me she she told me it was a spaceship and there were aliens in it she would have never have uh, spoken about her artwork very very quiet i had another uh, little boy we were doing torn paper projects and they had taken their paper and ripped it into strips or however they wanted to and they got to use as much glue as they wanted to and glue it down onto um, another color background and he ripped four strips and put them down like a box and that's all he wanted to do and i asked him i said you know would you like to add some more or cut other colors up he said no this is a dog house and i said it most certainly is and left it right at that <laughs> 
but they they take ownership of their art when it's theirs um, it's not it doesn't have to look like a panda bear or um, you know a snowman or something like that which I'm just as guilty doing lessons that involve um, having you know kind of an outcome based versus the process um, another one of my favorite 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 things to use with little kids are oil pastels oil pastels are super soft um, they're super bright they they're not hard or waxy like um, a crayon so even the kiddos that have the lightest most delicate touch can really get some color onto their paper um, very easily I know I've got one little girl in pre-k 3 and these are her go-to and if they don't have wrappers on them which most of mine don't at school they will get on their hands um, hand sanitizer gets oil pastels off really really easily but with this you could then introduce watercolor or liquid watercolor and they could paint right on top and it would resist they think it's magical how paint disappears off of you know either crayon or oil pastels and i know a lot of um, preschool teachers don't have oil pastels in their classroom but it, it's it's a cool supply if you had a little bit of extra money and you wanted to try something and just to show you how fabulous these are and good old whole watercolors here when they start painting over that and they can see all that disappear off of the um, oil pastels they think it's cool and it's a beautiful little work of art there another idea a good helpful hint I bought these little containers at the Dollar Tree. They were, I think they were three for a dollar. Sometimes I will saturate a sponge with glue. And um, if they're gluing pieces on, they can always take their um, piece of paper that maybe they've cut to collage down. And everything's wet around here. If this were their paper, this would be um, saturated in glue. They could actually press it. And get it nice and gluey and then adhere it to the paper that was just kind of a fun fun little uh, trick um, spools I had someone give me a ton of spools these are fabulous as well for making marks on paper uh, one year I ended up with um, alphabet letters and we did a huge colorful stamping collage of nothing but um you know letters and their co colors of their choice straws are great you can't go wrong with a straw you can either wash them or just chunk them when you're finished um let's see here if you had old cds an old cd you can take Add some paint and like I said this is tempera paint I want to mix a little here we're gonna do a twisty picture Let's see if I can find something to print on so this is a CD and your fingers are gonna get messy but you can print it and you can twist it so like doing a little dance and peel that off and we'll tell you a whole story about that it looks like a planet or something this is a great idea wash it off use it again another fabulous idea is my it's called mono printing but you print on a plastic bag so because i don't have another one and i'm going to put this down because i've made a hot mess now so you have a plastic bag and the kiddos are allowed to paint whatever they want on it color wise it could just be a bunch of random colors 
and you place a piece of paper over top of this and you pull a print. So let's just say we've got some yellow and I didn't wash my, that's why I try and stick to either a couple colors that won't make mud or a couple colors that will make a new color. And this is kind of like the foil as well. They are um, painting on a super slick surface that they generally would not um, be painting on. So then you put this down. Of course, you'd write your name on the back. They can massage it. They can squish it with their fingers. Get all that. That's a really cool feeling underneath. And then pull that print right off. And who knows what this could be. But that's a mono print. Um, mono because generally you would do it one time and then wash the bag off and try it again. But why couldn't you take this right here later on and go back with another activity and put the worms back on it? You know, they, they love to layer because in preschool, more is more. And that's just it. I think that's gorgeous. You know, go with that. Let them go back with the, um, you know, the potato masher later on. This literally engages this grade level and it's just amazing. It's amazing the difference um, between the noise level in the class. They are so into their work because it's their own. It doesn't have to look like a scarecrow or it doesn't have to look like the teacher sample. Um, you don't have to go in there with a, a sample at all. Some days I'll go in and I might have a book to read because I love to um, bring in children's literature and artists. I try and, you know, throw in the art history with them because they do get it. And I might make something with them all sitting around me, but I try not to say, okay, well, you've got to have, let's cut five pieces and stick it on or let's cut three circles and let's put it on. Let's see what they look like. Um, this is open-ended and the results are amazing. And these kiddos are super engaged and they absolutely love it because it is theirs and there are no rules. I mean, somewhat. I forgot to show you my pool noodles. These are fabulous. They think Printing with a pool noodle is just about as good as it gets because it makes a donut and they all love donuts and they take them and they squish them and they turn them and they rotate them and there you have it. I will um, make sure these lessons and some more get on to my YouTube page and I'll give you all links to them so you can try them in your classroom. Um, but like I said, there's no right or wrong. It's about the process and it's about the kids engaging and owning their own work.